Couple guys coming off great weekends. That's always good to say on a Monday here as we do the morning wager. 28 and 14 run on this show in addition to our client plays, by the way. So red hot all around. Mark Zeno, I'm sure, will find something to complain about here as we bring him in. Whoa. Two Major League Baseball playoff games and Monday Night Football on the docket today. Not, all, not only is our record great, we are the best dressed show out here. Uh, we absolutely are the best looking show out here. And uh, yes, uh, I mean, there is plenty of re- what, what a tool. Can, can, just get that off the screen. Anyway, um, my God, some people. Yeah, that's better. I'd rather watch that. So, uh, <laughs> we had a great weekend. I told you on Friday we were back. Like we, meaning me, because Brian Power at some point will tell you how great his football record is before the show is over. But I am back. And so we together are back. And it's been a great weekend, uh, five and one. The Steelers disappointed me last night, but uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, swept the college board on Saturday. Of course, the show is always uh, the best place to go for all your free information and uh, and plays at twenty eight and fourteen. Man, we are kicking butt at sixty six percent. Yes, we go to it. We've been going like two and one every day. It feels I like know. for we two weeks now. now. We need a sweep. We need, we need a, sweep. a sweep. Let's do we it today. So we. Th- not a lot of games, but everything's marquee with two Major League Baseball playoff matchups, like I said, and Monday Night Football. For the double play, we're going to focus on baseball. Our show best bet's going to be on Monday Night Football. You're kicking us off with the Yankees. Your New York Why Yankees. Because up- I Yankees. think it's funny, and I didn't I didn't grow up listening to What's-His-Face, John Sterling, so I'm I get Sterling? to say it now, and it's funny. Yes, oh. it's funny like, to me. Okay. So, anyway, I'm sorry. Like, like, I amuse it amuses me. All right. Yes. Yeah, yes. You amuse right. me. You know the well, things you say. Uh, yeah. I, all right. All right, I Joe Pesci. Yes. I woke up this Joe morning. Pesci. No, it's that's that's not Joe Pesci. What are you talking about? That's I not Joe I Pesci. Please. I'm anyway. talking about good fellas. I understand that. Yeah, you are a good fella. Regardless. Thank you. I woke up this morning and uh when Brian Power and I had our that's morning good. coffee, as we always do. Uh, I looked at him very simply and said, there's no way I'm not taking the Yankees-Royals game over seven and a half. So I'm taking the Yankees-Royals game over seven and a half. Why? Well, I don't like Carlos Rodon at all. Uh, BP seems to say, whoa, less than two runs and 14 to 16 starts. Blah, blah, blah. I don't trust him, period. Um, I don't like him. 21 to 32. Him. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Um, and, and I know what his numbers say. But also, again, Rodon is one of the guys who's been – a major beneficiary of legitimate run support this year, better than most pitchers out there, Um, which is part of the reason why his four ERA has him with 16 wins because Carlos Rodon um, gets 5.41 runs of support per start this year. Yankees are 19 and 13 with him on the mound uh, straight up during the regular season. And look, uh, if game one told us anything, both these teams showed up to hit. Uh, I know all year long we've talked about how the Yankees can't hit lefties, but the last month of the season, the Yankees were top 10 in OPS and WRC plus against left-handed pitching. So it started to come around a little bit. Um, I know that Cole Reagans has been fantastic on the road. Um, he faced the Yankees once this year, had a very good start against them. Radon faced the Royals once this year, had a so-so start, gave up four runs, only two were earned. But um, And then you bring in the Royals' bullpen, really. That's the whole thing. And, and for as good as the Yankees' bullpen has been all year long, there is a level of volatility in the playoffs. Why? Because Aaron Boone sucks. Aaron Boone ah. could, could, could ruin a, a free glass of water uh, when it comes to managing a bullpen in the playoffs. Another guy you just flat out don't want to trust to bring in the right guy at the right spot. I think the number's too low. If it was eight and a half, I'd say no. But I think between all this stuff together, I got enough here to look at this thing and go over. And oh, by the way, guess what? If this thing stays under, the Yankees are losing. Period. Wow. They won't. They will not lose a game. I don't think they should lose a game where they score at least four runs, right? But the way this stays under mm-hmm. is the Yankees only score one or two. And and if that happens, I think the Yankees lose the game. So, um, nonetheless, I'm going over seven and a half in game one here. Or game two, rather. Sorry. Smash that like button if you are in agreement with Mark Zinno there. I will tackle the other game, the first game on the ALDS docket on Monday. Guardians-Tigers. Ask me, Zeno, if I care that Scooble's starting for the Tigers. Um, I would ask you how you feel about Tariq Scooble starting for the Tigers and whether that really matters to you. 
Don't care. I'm taking the Guardians as home underdogs. I think this price is crazy. I get that Scooble's the presumptive AL Cy Young winner. His presence alone, though, should not justify a price shift to this degree. Guardians are the better team. They have the better lineup. They have the better bullpen. They should not be underdogs at home. They, they have the best home record in the American League during the regular season. You look at the Detroit's last series. Scooble closed around plus 120 at Baltimore. Now, they closed plus 150 for the game he didn't pitch, so there was a 30-cent shift there. Kind of similar here, but the, the shift is actually bigger here because uh, the Guardians closed minus 135 for game one, so it's a 45-cent shift in their price. I- I'm sorry. It's too much. Everybody's expecting this to be the game. Okay, Scoobles a stopper. Detroit's been red hot in the second half. Look, he faced the Guardians only once during the regular season. And while he allowed just one run, he did give up 10 hits. So we, we call that scattering 10 hits when you give up one run on 10 hits, by the way. I, I just think, to I'm going to keep it simple. I, it, it's all about price for me, Mark. I, I just don't think the Guardians should be home underdogs here. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the opener thing... The opener thing blew up in Detroit's face. They tried something. It didn't work. Uh, again, the Guardians, they they could score at home. I don't trust their lineup necessarily on the road. I think it's going to be tough to win in Detroit. But as a home, I, I've got to do this. I've got to back the better I mean, team at a plus price I'm with in game you. two. I, I, Guardians. I think the tactical decision by A.J. Hinch to do what he did in game one, knowing he was going to have schoolball coming back in game two, um, was a, a, a roll of the dice, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because if for whatever reason, Scooble has a below average outing, and by that I mean he gets touched up for two or three runs, right? Like that's below average for for Scooble. If he gives up three runs um, against this Cleveland bullpen and, and, and a Tigers team that cannot hit lefties on the road this year. I mean, bottom five batting average, OPS, WRC+, plus, bottom 10 and runs scored, home runs hit. I mean, they just don't hit lefties on the road for whatever reason. And strangely enough, there are four lefties starting tonight, um, which is a very mm-hmm. unique scenario. I would like to find a prop, a lefty to give up a home run tonight. <laughs> that would that, can we find that prop? Is that is that available? But um, regardless, I, I just th- there's a very thin margin for error, and the price adjustment doesn't match that margin for error, right? Like th- the fact that you would flip mm-hmm. to your point, Detroit to being this this big of a favorite, and for Detroit being this is a big favorite in this spot. Because typically against better teams all year long, they have been an underdog even with Scooble on the map. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think the logic is sound. Well, thank you. I appreciate that support there. If you support the Cleveland Guardians, and I don't think a lot of you will, but still smash that like button. We do enjoy uh, and uh, welcome your support. Also, comment down below with your favorite Major League Baseball bets for Monday. We will be getting to Monday Night Football and our show Best Bet in just a minute. Quick story though, you talk about um, you talk story about time. player props. I uh, I was I met a buddy out last night, and he in game one bet Jose Ramirez over one and a half total bases. Okay, Ramirez yes. in his first at bat got to second. It was scored an error. Okay, and he only and I, so I he mean, did not he, finish. He hit the ball. He actually hit. He the hit the ball. Got, how did he get to second? He just ran there. No, he got, yes, okay. he hit the ball. It was, it was a hard, it was a hard, yeah, hard hit, hard hit down the third baseline. Thanks. The third now baseman got, okay, I thought you watched the game. I'm sorry. The third baseman, you know, he got tangled up. He missed, he misplayed the ball. It went by him. Okay. My butt, so my buddy did not win his bet. He, he went to bed thinking he hadn't won his bet. Woke up the next morning. Money was in his account. He said, wait a That's minute, how did good. that win? Yes. The bet won. What happened? The Cleveland Guardians petitioned Major League Baseball to have the error overturned and ruled as a hit, and Major League Baseball did it. They gave the Guardians their way. They gave them. So it wound up being a double, and he cashed his bet. Um, he That was on Caesars, for the record, that my buddy is. I guess FanDuel did, say, did the same thing. Let me know if anyone out there watching the show bet that Jose Ramirez over one and a half total bases in game one on DraftKings. Let me know. If they reverse the decision, I guess they have to. I mean, it was official Major League Baseball scoring, but I, I don't know yeah. what the official verdict was there. That that was interesting to me. I thought I just wanted to share that. I mean, very it's like what a great way to find out you won some money, right? Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Cleveland Guardians, for being so freaking petty. We won the game anyways, <laughs> like seven nothing. 
Like, why does that get mad? Seven nothing. You know, like, <laughs> seven nothing. <laughs> you know what? That error was bulk. You know, uh, there I you go. By, I am offended by this <laughs> error. It bothers me. Yes. I'm going to petition Major League Baseball to do it and get it right. Like, imagine if that stuff happened in the NFL with referees. Like, I would like to have this call overturned. I would like to uh, make sure that we change everything. And, you know, a day later, it's like, yes, we will, we will credit you those yards. Which typically, those scoring things that happen in the NFL where they change the yardage by like one, so it always seems to affect me negatively, somehow. What, for fantasy football? Yes. Yeah, that's stupid, stupid <laughs> fantasy football. Fan- fantasy football is stupid. It really is. All right. Well, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to. Re- I I quit my league this year. It feels great. Uh, we're gonna get to real football right now. Kansas City Chiefs and New Orleans Saints. But first, today's the last day you can take advantage of that seven days for seventy seven dollars special offer. Oh. Mark mentioned he was five and one over the weekend. Time, time I would jump five in. And get in. Now. I went five and zero. Oh. So the morning wager, the the two of us were combined ten and one this weekend. How about that five percent play on Denver that I had yesterday? What a play that was, huh? And, and look, I'm going play. to expose. I am going to expose Brian Power right now. I'm going to expose oh, no. him. I'm, Wait a minute! Now, to, now things are going great. I, I will. I want to tell the audience that when Brian Power told me why he made it a five percent play, he literally said, "Because I don't like the Las Vegas Raiders," and that was enough to get Brian Power to make the Denver Broncos a five percent play. So, look, good job, buddy. No, no, I'm going to tell you this. It should be no. illegal in all 50 states and possibly several U.S. territories for the Las Vegas Raiders, a team that crappy, to have a 3-2 and two record. That was the handicap. It's just that simple. They're not a good the football best team, part, and they the, weren't going to win. Part came, did you see that Max Crosby was talking smack to Bo Nix at the line of scrimmage? Did you see that highlight? I, I, did, I did see that, yes. That yes, yes very, I did. very well done by Max Crosby. He's like talking crap to the rookie. Bo, they can't hear you. <laughs> it was kind of cute. I like it. Bo and I had the last laugh. Will we yeah. have the last laugh with this show, Best Bet? Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, Mark Zeno, don't have a lot of uh, receivers. A lot of injuries. Cluster of injuries at that position. But they do have old reliable Travis Kelsey to catch yeah. passes from Patrick Mahomes. Uh, we're not confident that Travis Kelsey can get a lot of yards necessarily, but he's going to get a lot of targets. He had a lot of targets last week against the Chargers. So our best bet is Kelsey over five and a half receptions relative to what we've seen in previous years from him. This number's pretty low. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, Kelsey in his heyday was you know, set at seven and a half, eight and a half certain cases on a routine basis, right? And people have asked all year long, is there something wrong with Travis Kelsey? You know, is Taylor Swift getting in the way? Is he, is he, you know, be bopping too much and not really playing all that well. I, I honestly think Andy Reid purposely used him as a decoy. I genuinely do. Um, you know, he, he, there, there was so much coverage about not letting 87 beat you um, from, you know, defensive coordinators that Andy Reid said, screw it, I don't need to force this guy the ball. I'll just get it to the other guys like Rasheed Rice. Well, after Rasheed Rice went down last week, uh, we saw Kelsey quickly become the prime target. He got nine targets and seven receptions only averaging 12.2 yards per reception, uh, which is way below kind of Kelsey numbers when you look at, you know, what he's done throughout his career um, the last two years, really. But this is a guy that, you know, for the most part, sat in the 13 range, you know, the mid to, mid to high 12s. I mean, so he's coming down a little bit just because he's not really being used at that same level of target over the last two seasons. I say all this to say that, I don't care about the yardage, but I think the short, quick passes to Kelsey are going to be a big part of the game plan tonight. The Saints in their four games, if you look at the way they've sort of gone down, right, uh, their four opponents. The Panthers in week one got blown out. They had no reason to even try to use the tight end in the offense. It was a blowout from the very beginning. And then the next two weeks against the Saints, I mean, against the Cowboys and the Eagles. Cowboys, Jake Ferguson, a huge part of what they do. He had seven targets at six receptions. The Eagles use Gat- Dallas Goddard, 11 targets, 10 receptions. And, of course, the Falcons don't use Kyle Pitts because, well, they drafted him fourth overall to waste it. So there is all that. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, it was a stupid, just a, a, a maniacally stupid pick by the Falcons. Not a bad player, just a stupid pick to take a tight end at four. All that comes together for me to say they, they got to get the ball to somebody. And Xavier mm-hmm. Worthy is a guy that you know, may be the beneficiary – but if you're going to look at Xavier Worthy, I would go to his longest reception prop because they're going to use his speed to get down the field. Don't really trust anybody out of the backfield like Samaj P. Ryan and Kareem Hunt. Um, and how often will Noah Gray, Justin Watson, and what's the other white guy's name who keeps fumbling the ball? Carson um, Steele. 
Yeah, that guy. They, God, they just, he might not be out there much because he can't hold on to the rock. They've given up on him. Yeah. So, again, white guy carrying a football, bad idea, unless he's Christian McCaffrey. Uh, beyond that, this is where we go. Kelsey over five and a half receptions. It's even – I think we're seeing even plus money uh, on this. Yeah, Ooh, even money love it. over at FanDuel. So, you know, uh, a great spot here. I think Kelsey's the beneficiary of all this, and we go over five and a half. Show best bet, Travis Kelsey over five and a half receptions. Let us know what you think of that doubt in the comments section below. If you already haven't done so, if you're not already subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel, what what exactly are you waiting for? I mean, this show is every Monday through Friday. We give you three free picks. It's a it's a wonderful show. Why would you not click busy. that bell for instant alerts when They're it drops? Probably too busy watching people from foreign parts in the Orient doing stupid things. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is that necessary? Yeah, it was. Mark hey, Zitto and I went 10-1 and one this past week at Combined yeah, Client Place. We, oh, how good was Texas hey. A&M on Saturday, oh, by the way? Hi, hi, Tokyo Brandon. Texas A&M was, was such a good place Saturday. It was very good. My Georgia Auburn under was one of my better calls of the season. I hadn't gotten many right prior to that. <laughs> Washington over Michigan. We are back. Baby. All right. Everybody, until next time, let's cash some tickets.